Here are solutions to homework set number 7 for ECE 461-661. This homework looks at error constants, rough criteria, and sketching a root locus. The first problem is error constants. Given the following systems, find the system type, error constants, and error for step input. The system type is pretty easy. Just count how many poles are at s equals 0. So this is 0, 1, 2, 0. Kp is the DC gain. Plug in s equals 0, I get 100 over 14. Um, infinity, infinity, 100 over minus 14. Kv is the gain of s times g of s as s goes to 0. So in this case, I get 0. The s's cancel, I get 100 over 14. Infinity, and 0. The error for step input is 1 over kp plus 1. So it's 0.12, negative 0.16. You can't have negative steady state error. And type 1, type 2, type 3, and so on have no error for step input. Now what the steady state error corresponds to is if you take your system, close the feedback loop. Here's where I want to go, 1. Here's where I actually am. And this is the steady state error. That is equal to 0.1228. For the first case, when it's negative, I'll actually overshoot by 0.16. Problem 2. Problem 2 is Routh criteria. For this polynomial, what range of k produces a stable polynomial or negative definite polynomial? Uh, to do that, multiply it all out and then set up a Routh table. So this is 1, s cubed. Then every other term, this is the s term and 0. This is the s squared term, s to the 0 term, and 0. Now, the next entry is take minus the determinant of 121, 98, 2k minus 120, over 21. And that'll be 21 times 98 minus 2k minus 120 over 21 that value, and 0. When there's a 0, 0 to the right, this becomes 0. When this number is a 0, uh, that term is going to drop straight down. 0, 0 to the right gives me 0. So there's my Routh table. The condition for stability is there could be no sign flips, so positive, positive. This has to be positive, meaning k is less than 1,089. This has to be positive, meaning k is bigger than 60. The range that satisfies both of those is k's between 60 and 1089. Problem 3. If I have this fourth order polynomial, multiply it all out. And so here's the s to the fourth term, s squared, and 1. Then s cubed, s, and 0. A couple things you can do right away. When there's a 0 right here, this term straight, drops straight down. A 0, 0 means this is 0. When there's a 0 right here, that'll drop straight down. To get this number, I've got to do a little bit of work. That's minus the determinant of 119, 119, 269 over 19. Gives you 19 times 119 minus 269 over 19, 104. To get B, that'll be take the previous two rows. 19, 104, 269, 168 plus 2k over 104. So these two minus those two over 104. Do some algebra. That's what you get. Now for stability, there can be no sign flips in the first column. So positive, positive, positive. This has to be positive. k is less than 658. This has to be positive. k is greater than minus 84. Root locus plots. Sketch the root locus for the following system. In this case, what I do is I start with the open loop poles. I've got a pole at plus 1, minus 10, minus 12. So there's plus 1, minus 10, minus 12. Real axis loci when there's an odd number of poles to the right. So here I've got 0, even, odd, even, odd. Uh, breakaway point is the midpoint pushed right. The j omega crossing, you have to solve numerically. 
search up and down the JMEG axis until the angle is set up to 180, and you find that numerically it's right here. Then the asymptotes. The center of mass, the average is of 1 minus 10 minus 12 is 21 over 3 minus 7. Split the plane up three ways. So 3 times theta is 180. Solve for theta, and I get three answers. I get plus 60, minus 60, and 180. So I come together, split apart at the breakaway point, pass through the JMEGA crossing, and approach the asymptote. There's the root locus plot. Or the numbers, those actual numbers. The breakaway point on test, you can just kind of approximate it. The midpoint pushed right a little bit. Uh, here I just kind of showed off, if I search, search along the line x plus j point 1 till the angles add up to 180, I find this point, which is basically the breakaway point, minus 2.9531. To find the j mega crossing, I do a search. Search up and down till the angles add up to 180, and it's actually j 9.8995. Another one. If I have four poles, I wind up with a the root look is, that looks like this, pull at minus 1, minus 3, minus 7, minus 8. Real axis loci is when there's an e or odd number of poles to the right. So even, odd, even, odd, even. Breakaway point is the midpoint pushed right, midpoint pushed left. J mega crossing, you have to solve numerically. Search till the angles add up. And I get right here asymptotes. I've got four poles, so four times theta is 180 degrees, gives me four answers. I'm at plus 45 degrees, minus 145 degrees, plus 135 degrees, minus 135 degrees, and the center of mass is the average that intersects right here. The average of minus 1, minus 3, minus 8, minus 9 is right there. In terms of numbers, here's what you should get. The real axis loci are between minus 1, minus 3, minus 7, minus 8. Breakaway points, again found numerically. I did a search, x plus j point 1. Beep when you're done. There's the breakaway points. J mega crossing, again, is found numerically. Search till the angles add up to 180. If you plug in s equals j 3.76, I get 180 degrees and four asymptotes. Problem six. If I have complex poles, same idea, but I have a departure angle. Any point on the root locus, the angles have to add up to 180. So to find the departure angle, take this guy right here, evaluate it at a point plus epsilon. All these angles I can calculate. The one I can't calculate is this one. That angle is whatever it takes to make the total add up to 180. So I've got four poles, gives me four asymptotes, center of mass, J mega crossing, uh, search till the angles add up to 180, real axis loci, going to that asymptote, departure angle. To get the departure angle is at minus one plus J4, as S approaches that point, angles 180. This I can't analyze because they get zero, so analyze everything else. Everything else plus this angle, actually minus that angle since I'm dividing, is 180. Solve for theta, I get theta is minus 43 degrees. And that's what you're getting. It's leaving at minus 43 degrees, then goes to the asymptote. Number seven, if I have zeros, same idea. As I approach the zero, angles have to add up to 180. So here I've got four poles, two zeros. These two poles go to those zeros, these two go to the asymptote. I have two extra poles, so the asymptote is at the center of mass. The average of add the poles, well, minus 6, minus 5, minus 1, 0, minus the zeros, so zeros act as a negative mass, over 2. I have net two poles is minus 6. There's my asymptote. Real axis loci is again even odd, so here's even, odd, even, odd even, breakaway point, about the midpoint-ish, 
going up, midpoint-ish, going up. The approach angle, to calculate that, angles have to add up to 180. So at J2, this has to be 180. Pull this term out, because I don't know what that is. Call that theta. Analyze everything else, plus the departure angle has to be 180. Departure angle must be minus 77 degrees. If you sketch it, that's what you're getting. I'm coming in at this angle, minus 77 degrees. So that's sketching a root locus. Uh, the root locus plot just tells you how the poles are shifting. Next, we will look at designing compensators, given the root locus plot. But that's homework set number seven for ECE 461.